accomplish much in life. Every family, you need a vision. Individually, you need a vision. Where are you going in life? What are your plans for the future? Everyone needs a vision. See, the vision keeps you focused. Don't ever think just because you're a member of this church. No, you need a vision to carry out your part. Because everyone has a part to play in carrying out God's vision. And again, visions should come from God. Because every vision that God gives you is bigger than you are. God will never give you an assignment that you can do yourself. Because if you can do it yourself, you wouldn't need God. But every assignment that God gives you is beyond your potential, is beyond your ability, and it keeps you in his face. That's why we pray. That's why we fast. That's why we read the word. That's why we go to church. Because we need God's help. You can't get there on your own. And that's why I'm so grateful, and I thank each of you here at St. Peter's for working with Joy and I to carry out the will of God. See, actually, vision is a leader's most potent weapon. You are a man of God. You are a woman of God. We are people of God. And our most potent weapon in this life is the vision that came from God. So your vision is your assignment from God. Now, if you get a vision and you don't need God's help, you're in trouble because you've got to provide for yourself. But if it came from God, God would provide. There's always provision for the vision if God is out front. And you've got to recognize that. Now, God-honoring vision, powerful, biblical, God-honoring vision is probably the most important thing in your life. You just graduated. Now, what's the next level? Don't settle down by no means. Are you there? Yeah. Notice, hey guys, notice what the Bible stated there in Proverbs 29, verse 18, where there is no vision. The people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Father, we ask your grace over this lesson. You placed this in my heart to speak to the people this morning. All that is here, they're here for a purpose. And grant us wisdom to speak the mind of God to each and every one. Guys, here the scripture is telling you now, for there is no vision, people will perish. If you don't have a vision, you don't have no fight. Because if you don't have no vision, you don't have anything to fight for. If you don't have a revelation of where God's taken you, Vision is the key to a successful life. Because when you know that God has made certain promises to you and God has revealed to you where he wants to take you, there's going to come challenges, opposition. But that's what makes us tough. That's what makes us stronger. The challenges and opposition, amen? See, vision is the core of leadership. Vision is the fuel that leaders run on. You got to recognize that. It's the energy that creates action. And it's the fire that ignites the passion in my heart to, full, to move forward. And I'm always aggressive against anything that comes against me or anything that try to come into my life to try to stop this vision that God has given me. God has given me a plan for my future. God has given you a plan for your future. You can't let those dream robbers come and steal that plan. God has a purpose for you. You're created for a purpose. You're born for a purpose. You need to write it down. This is where God has taken me. Let your wife see it. Let your husband see it. Because the Bible says, write the vision down that people may read it and run with it. Amen? Now, it's very important that you learn that. It's the vision that ignites the passion that is in our heart. Notice that statement, that bullet right there, God. Vision is a picture of the future that produces passion. If you can read your vision or your goal or your plan and don't get excited, go back to the table. Because it shall, show, it shall have such ex excitement of what you are becoming. There should be such an excitement even going through trials. The trials come to kill the vision. The trials come to stop the plan of God.
the trials come to try to get me to throw in the tower. But no, I've heard from God. I've seen the end at the beginning, so I'll fight to the end. That's what it's all about. See, the good thing about vision, you see it. Notice that bullet right there? What are you seeing? Because that's what vision is, seeing into the future. That's what imagination is all about. Do you not know your greatest uh, instrument is imagination? Because uh, you get images of coming attraction. You get pictures of coming attraction. God has shown you, and you see things that other people don't see because God didn't show it to them. Yeah, you're constantly, there's an excitement because I've seen the end. At the beginning, I know what I am becoming. And when we get people to join forces with us, they just bring strength to what God has said. Amen? Amen. Something else about vision, you feel it. Yeah. See, vision shall invoke deep into your heart. When God gives you a vision, that thing shall be invoked deep into your heart. That you feel it, you get excited. That's some excitement comes out of every time you read about what God said to you about this vision. Every time you think about it, there's a joy that wells up out of me. It's almost like fire shut up in your bones. It's almost like it's hard to explain the joy. It's hard to describe the joy that wells up on the inside of me when I think about where God is taking me, when I think about what God is doing in my life. When I think about the goodness of God, there is a joy that you can't express to someone else. Oh, yes, I might be going through a fight right now, but I'm going to win because God told me at the beginning, this is where I want to take you. This is my plan for your life. So, therefore, let the fight come on because I'm going to get stronger. Every fight makes me stronger. Every challenge makes me stronger. I don't start crying because I'm going through something. I get excited because I know that no weapon that's formed against me will prosper, and every tongue that rises against me in judgment is condemned. Now listen to me, St. Peter. You got a, God has a plan for you. And most important, that fourth bullet, with a vision, you have to take ownership of it. You own this. This is, the, this is the one thing that you own in this life is the vision that God gave you. If you don't take ownership of it, no one else will. Now, people will assist you and help you, but you got to take ownership. You got to be responsible. You got to pay. You got to live close to God. You got to walk this thing out. If no one else is standing with you, if God is with you, if God is for you. That's the key. Where is God? Not where the folks are. Where is God? Because God can take two men and a woman and turn the world upside down. So God is the key to your success, not another man. Not another woman. The key to your success is your relationship with God. Are you out there? Now, guys, if you're not pursuing it, it won't come to pass. So it comes down to this. The Bible tells us in Romans 12, 8, you've got to lead with diligence. You have to be persistent in the things of God because the Bible says, Hebrews 11, 6, he's a rewarder of them that would diligent. The diligent man will prosper. The diligent woman will prosper. You can't be lazy. You can't be a catch potato. You can't be somewhere sitting around playing with the boys all the time or the girls all the time. You got to get serious. I got a plan from God. I got a vision from God. And if I don't take ownership of it and lead and drive and take responsibility, no one else will. Now, people play with you till you become a failure. But if they see that you are sincere, you'll know who's your friend. Because your enemies like to play. But your friends will get serious. Amen. What are we going to do about this vision? 
Now, I'm going to say a few things to you because this is your day. Tell your neighbor, this is your day. I've been along with God. I've got some fire in my bones. Known as that bullet there, God, people supernaturally gifted by God or gifted to lead must yield themselves fully to God. Because if you don't yield yourself fully to God, you'll try to do it in the flesh. And it'll be more the works of the flesh and not spirit. You can about know when it's flesh because you get egotistic. You get heady, you get high-minded. You think people should be bound to you when you should be bound to God. Anything good happened in my life is all because of Jesus. I can't take no glory for it, and neither can you. And if you want, the further God take you, the more humble you should be. And if God's going to take you there, you've got to clothe yourself in humility. Roy, I don't know what it is going on. Roy, I've seen you in my face for the last week. I don't know. I just know that, I just know that consistency will take you there. Stand up, Roy. Consistency will take you there. I, you stay in my face. I'm praying for you. Consistency would, I don't like to call people's name, but I, do, I, I did this now. Because I want to give you a word from God. Your consistency. Stay there because God has plans for you. Amen. Stay there. Tell your wife. Let's rally together. Amen. Get in this house. Study the word. Because God's going to make great things happen in our lives. Amen. Look at your wife. JC, turn to Penny. Look at me, Joyce. So let's work together. Let's stand together. God has great plans for us. You can't get there on your own. And if you got somebody on your team who has a worldly spirit, fire them. You can't fire your wife. You can't fire your husband. But you can start praying for them that they get some fire in them. Because your greatest enemy with God is the work of the flesh. And flesh and spirit can't work together. Now, shout three times. Glory, glory, glory. Look at someone you love and say, glory to God. Glory to God. Because I'm getting ready to drop some nuggets in your life that's going to change your whole life. You are born for a purpose. You are created for a purpose. You are here today for a purpose. You didn't let the ring stop you. You came in the way. You didn't let the ice stop you. I know ice out there, but they said it might be. So God's going to reward your diligence because diligent people don't quit, don't throw in the towel. Diligent folks don't find reasons not to go. Now, I want everyone to read this next statement and never forget it. Notice that bullet. Your first vision is God's commands. But without a vision, people perish. Where there's no revelation, people go unrestrained. Your first vision in life is God's commands. This is your most potent weapon, is what says the scripture of what did God say. Never forget that. What said the scripture? What did God say? This is your weapon. This is the weapon of your warfare. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God said, I lift up a standard. God's standard is his word. And when the enemy comes, that's your weapon. So you got to get a vision of seeing yourself being what God said in his word. You have to get a vision of seeing yourself doing what God said in his word. You have to get a vision of seeing yourself carrying out God's commands in your life. And there's a lot of people who have visions, but they put it ahead of God. And the next bullet there, notice what he said. Your second vision is your plans and your desires, but you never put your plans and your desires above God's commands. And this is why most Christians don't succeed in life. They put their plans and their desires ahead of God. And God's not going to promote anything that puts him second class. Or makes him second class. So I've learned my first vision 
It's what God said to me. I got to get a picture of myself doing the right thing. I got to get a picture and see myself doing what God said. I can't be negligent in doing what's right and expect God to promote my desires. I can't be negligent in doing the right thing and think God's going to promote my plans. So my first vision in life is getting a picture of what God said coming to pass, but also doing what God commands me to do. I can't ignore the command of walking in love. I can't ignore the command of tithing. I can't ignore the command of forgiving. I can't ignore the command of praying, seeking the face of God, reading the word, getting along with your neighbor, forgiving one another. I can't ignore those. That's my verse, vision. It's whatever he say do. That's what miracles come out of when God sees that I place his commands first. Not the dollar, but his commands, which produces more dollars than you could ever have. Dreamed of. Are you out there? The Bible says in Psalm 37, verse 4, if you delight yourself in the Lord, God will give you the desires of your heart. So what is my first vision? Never forget this. And notice what God's command is right there, guys. Notice that on the screen. God commands you to be strong. Now, if God give a command, that's a purpose for that command. And my first vision is to be strong. Paul said in Ephesians 6, 10, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Ephesians 3, 16, strengthen with might by his spirit in the inner man. God is telling me that I got to develop myself spiritually to carry out his will. And there's a lot of people who had a command from God, but they did not develop themselves spiritually. They were not consistent in prayer. They were not consistent in reading and studying the Word, meditating the Word. They are not consistent in forgiving and forgetting. They live in the past. All they think about is their error and everybody else's error. And all those things do is weaken you. For you don't pray, Jesus, that you will find in your mind. So therefore, I have to be consistent and doing what God commands. And one of God's greatest commands to me was to be strong. Now, to be strong, listen to me, St. Peter, to be strong, I have to live the Christ-empowered life. That's a command given by God because God knows I'm going to face things out there that's bigger than me. God knows there's going to be opposition to his vision. There's going to be opposition to the plans that he gave me. So the first thing I have to do is live the Christ in power of life. Now, when I live the Christ in power of life, what happens? It gives me, it, it takes me beyond my own strength. I tap into another law, which is the law of the spirit of life in Christ. That's what makes you different from the world. You live by the law of the spirit of life in Christ. The Bible says there in Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, but don't stop there, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Because there are people that quote say, there's no condemnation. We know, no, we don't. But you can't put yourself under condemnation if you don't obey God's commands. Now, are you out there? So the Christ in power of life, say that. Puts me beyond my, takes me beyond my own strength. Now, since God knows that if I'm going to conquer in this life, I got to be strong. Notice what God told Moses, the first pastor, in Deuteronomy 11, verse 8. Therefore, you shall keep all the commandments which I command you this day, well, that you might be strong. And go in and possess the land for you go to possess it. This is God talking to his children. He said, you got to keep my commandments. And the purpose of keeping the commandments because you live a Christ in power of life and they give you an inner strength. And that inner strength qualifies you or prepares you to confront your adversaries. 
And if you don't follow through with God's command, what happens? Your adversary will overtake you. Your adversary is interfere with where God's going to take you. Are you out there? Now notice here, what's the purpose of keeping the commandments? I'm going to talk to you for a while. Talk to me. Look on the screen. That you might be strong. For what reason? To go possess the land that God, what? Has given you. God has already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, but you know the reason Christians not walking in it? They're not strong in the Lord. They don't have no fight in them. When the fight comes, they quit. They run and they hide. Are you out there? Notice what the scripture stated in Joel 2.11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. But notice what the scripture says, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? So now we are leaders qualified by God to do great things for him. Because the Bible says in Daniel 11, 32, the people that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. So now the Bible says when we learn how to execute God's word, it gives us an inner strength. God told Israel, keep my commandments. Don't give in to the flesh. Fight the flesh. Well, that you might be strong to go in and possess the land that I have already given you. Now, I chose Joshua because I like Joshua. He was a commander of the forces of God, and we're going to learn some good things. And notice here in Joshua's life, in Joshua 1, verses 3, 5 through 9, notice here God is talking to Joshua. Moses is dead. Joshua ministered to Moses. Now, Joshua has become the leader of the army of the Lord. He was the commanding general over the army of the Lord. God talks to Joshua. God talks to the leader. And this is what God is saying to Joshua. Number one, he said, every place that the sole of your foot should tread upon, he said, I've given it to you, as I said to Moses. Notice what, I love to read verse 5. Boy, I love to read verse 5. He said, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. He said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. And the reason I like to read that, notice what he said, no man shall be able to stand before you as an enemy. No man can stand before you as an enemy and stop you. No woman, nobody can stop you as an enemy. If you obey God's command, every place, the soil of your foot should tread up on. God said, I've given it to you. And God said, no man as an enemy, no woman as an enemy all the days of your life shall be able to stop you. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. So you're going to be confronted with enemies out there. But if God is for you, who can be against you? For greater is he that is in you and he that is in the world. Every time your enemies stand up, God should stand up. Every time your enemies speak, God should stand up and speak. See, our job is to execute the word. See, the people of the world, they start cursing. They start spitting. But when you and I are confronted with an enemy, what do we do? We execute the word. We speak the word. We act out the word. We are doers of the word. And then God said something that is so powerful. Notice what he stated in verse 6. He said, be strong and of good courage. For to this people you should divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. So here is God said, Joshua, you got to be strong to lead this crowd. Because you're going to have to divide their inheritance. They're going to be spitting and fighting one another. And you're going to have to be able to say, no, this is not yours, this is hers. But God keep repeating himself. Notice what he said there in verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous. Well, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. Well, that you may prosper wherever you go. So the secret to this life is maintaining focus. And what keeps me focused is God's commands. My first vision is the commands of God. What did God say? 
Because everywhere I go, everything I do, I should come out a winner. He said, everything, Douglas, everywhere you go, he wants you to prosper. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants you to prosper. Wants you to prosper. Obey his commands. And then he gave us a good analogy. Verse 8, he said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it, what? Day and night. And you may have what? Observe to do according to all that is written in it. But notice what he said, for then you will make your way prosper. And then you will have good success. So I pulled out three things there. There's a lot there. But there are three major things that God told Joshua. And the first one, he said, man, you got to be strong. Notice that bullet? He said, be strong. Verse 9, I'm sorry. Verse 9, he said, have not I commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God kept repeating that statement. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Look at your neighbor. Now you need more strength. You can't watch television 24 7 and be strong. You got to find some time for God. I mean, you got to cut that television off every now and then. Some of you guys spend more time on television than you do the Bible. And when trouble comes, you go look for scandal. Uh, whatever your favorite program is, that's nothing wrong with watching it, but don't let it consume all of your time. Don't let that television consume all of your time. You got to find some time for God. You got to find some time to pray. You got to find some time for the Word. Now, again, God said, I commanded you to be strong. At first bullet, he said, now be strong and of good courage. The next verse he said, be strong and very courageous. Now, I'm going to say some things here that I want you to write down. You might know it. You've been here long enough, and I'm repeating myself a lot. Courage is a spiritual force. Born of the Spirit of God, supplied by the Word of God. That's what the Word would give you, a boldness, a confidence, an assurance that no man, no woman can stand before me as an enemy. There will be things that come against me, but if God is for me, who can be against me? For greater is he that is in me, than John, than he that is in the world. Courage to stand up and tell everybody, we're going to make it. Courage to stand up and tell everybody, God's going to see us through. Courage to stand up and tell your children, we're going through this, but it's only for a season. Now, he says something else there. And that next bullet, he said that you might observe to do according to all the law. What are you saying? That you have to give attention to the word. You have to see yourself doing what God say do. Your first vision is God's commands. And you cannot defeat your enemies if you ignore what God said. You're the one to suffer when you don't forgive because you take on another person's sin. You can't get even with the devil. <laughs> Jesus proved that. But you can't strike at him by doing what's right. The Bible said, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. So I have to see myself doing what God say in his word, but my flesh do not want to do it. Sometimes your flesh may not want to forgive but it has no choice because God said forgive. Then this is what I like. Notice that next bullet right there. Then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Notice prosperity and success is in your hand. It's not in God's hand. No, no, no. See, when you make his commands a priority, you will deal wisely in the affairs of life. You'll make decisions based upon the spirit and not to flesh. 
He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you must meditate on his word day and night. Meditation, three ways of meditation, memorizing and visualizing and personalizing. I have to memorize what God said, but I get a vision or I get pictures of what's going to take place because I obeyed. And personalize, I've got to see myself doing what God said. That's the secret, amen? Now, I want, to, I, I want to do something there. I pulled a couple of characters out of that subject there because of, look, look at Caleb there a few minutes. Joshua 14. Caleb was there. Caleb and Joshua were running buddies. They were prayer partners. They hung out together. Like Jason, J.C. Jr., Larry, Daquan, or whoever your buddy is. Don't get a buddy that they don't pray. But Caleb and Joshua was there from the beginning. Notice what there in Joshua 14, verses 7. Caleb said, I was 45 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Notice what he said, verse 8. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But notice what he said. He said, man, but I hold the Father, the Lord, thou God. He said, I stayed with the word. Verse 9, so Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children forever. Why? Because you stay with God. Because you wholly follow the Lord. <coughs> My God. That's the key right there. You get a lot of opportunities to quit, throw in the towel, but stay with the word. Stay with the word. Tell your neighbor, stay with the word. And notice right there in verse 10, he said, and now behold, he said, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old. Verse 11, I love to read this. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was on the day that Moses sent me out to spy out the land. He said, as my strength was then, so now is my strength now. Ready for war, both for going out and for coming in. Eighty-five years old. He said, I still got some fight in my bones. Boy, that's a good word, isn't it? Verse 12, he said, Now therefore, he said, Give me my mountain. Of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim, that's Goliath's folks, was there, and that he, the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord would be with me, and I should be able to drive them out of the land. The Lord said. I get this. Caleb said, Man, I was 40 years old when God spoke through Moses, but Moses is gone. Moses is dead. But you see, I still got the word. I'm gone. They're gone. My dad is gone. But God is still the same. As long as you have a word, whether your friends are there, whether your buddies are there, mom and daddy may not be there, but if you got a word from God, it still will come out of women. So I like this word here, David. I mean, Kayla said, man, I'm 85 years old. I was 40 when I heard the word, but I stayed with that word. I'm 85 years old today. He said, but I still want my mountain. I still want my inheritance. Tell your neighbor, I still want my mountain. I still want my inheritance. And if you're wise, you want your inheritance. Because God doesn't make promises that he can't follow through with. Say, I want, I want my mountain. I want my inheritance. I, want my inheritance. I, sowed, my I sowed my seed. I did what I was commanded to do. I now, I still want my mountain. Everything God promised me in his word, 
I expect it to come to pass before I leave. This is the way I pray. This is the way I talk. I say, Lord, I'm not going to leave this earth until everything you promised me come to pass. I sown my seeds. I believe God. So I expect something to happen. Tell your neighbor, I expect something to happen. I expect God to move. And he will move if I stay in faith. Tell your neighbor, don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. If an 85-year-old man can go in and take his mountain, I'm not 85, I'm only 70 years old, and you're younger than I am. We still can fight. We still can, we can still, tell your neighbor, we can still take the city. We can take the city, Jason. We can take the city. You got to have some fight. We can take the city. And guess what? You don't get the spoils until you take the city. You got to go on the enemy's ground and take back. Some of you guys are too passive. Now, let's look at a few things. I'm going to get in your face a few minutes. Notice that bullet right there? Caleb's secret to his strength at 84 years old. What was his secret? What was, he's 85 years old. He said, but I'm still strong. What was his secret? What kept him strong? God would not let. See, all the other ones in Israel, they died out. All the other old heads, they died out. But God kept Caleb alive for a reason. And God will keep you alive. You'll outlive your relatives. You'll outlive your friends. You'll even outlive your enemies if you do what Caleb did. What did Caleb do? To stay? He stayed with the word. He said, I wholly followed God. Don't let someone come along and take you away from that word. Don't let someone come along and get between you and God. Paul said, nothing will separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I want my mountain. I say, I want my inheritance. Roy, tell your wife, I want my inheritance. Tell your friend, I want my inheritance. George Lee, we want our inheritance. Don't you want your inheritance? And it comes down to the next bullet. He wholly followed his God. And if you stay with God, you will get your inheritance. Now, I want to talk about some of you guys for a while. Notice that next statement, that passive crab. A crab that had no fight. A crab that did not obey the commands. A crab that was lazy. Whoa. You got some around the church. Notice there in Joshua 18, chapters 18, verses 2 and 3. But there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not received their inheritance. Whoa. It's not like some of you. You've been in this thing a long time, but ain't nothing happened. But notice Joshua said in verse 3, and Joshua said to the children of Israel, So how long will you neglect to go and possess the land which the Lord your God has given you? And the King James verse said, How long will you be slack? How long are you going to just sit around and wait for something to happen? You got to say with Abraham. But ain't no action, no fire. And when Joshua saw that tribe, he said, everybody else got their possession, but you don't see no. Hey, Groot, what's, what's, why are you, why you're not receiving your inheritance? I don't know, because I don't follow you at home. Why you're not receiving your inheritance? I don't know. Because I'm not with you 24 7. Why you're not receiving your inheritance? I don't know. 
because I'm not God, I'm not omnipresent. But all of us need to stop and say, is there anything in my life that will hinder me from receiving my inheritance. Because if you don't change, your situation won't change. How long will you slack? How long will you neglect the commandments of God? How long will you put up with the devil? How long will you just whatever? Name it and claim it, nothing ever happens. It's time for you to pull your head out of the sand. And say, God, if I'm missing it, you have to show me. Because you've been confessing too long. And nothing has happened. I think it's time to take a serious look. Whoa. See, notice that bullet. The seven tribes had not received their inheritance. And Joshua said, how long will you put up with it? All the other crowd got theirs. Why haven't you gotten yours? I don't know. Maybe there's some dead cats on the line. I don't know. Maybe you're walking in rebellion. I don't know. Maybe you won't forgive. I don't know. But what is that one thing in your life that the devil's hiding behind to rob you of God's glory? It may not be anything. It don't have to be something, but it would be wise to take a look. Amen. It would be wise to take a look. Because I, I live by this philosophy. If I'm believing God for something, it'll show up. I say, Lord, if, am I missing it? And I always look at my relationship first with my wife, then my children, then you. And if I'm convinced that if there's no dead cats on the line, I just keep praising God. Because I know it's going to come to pass. I know it will come to pass. In due season, it will come to pass. I keep on giving. I keep on tithing. I keep on walking in love. I keep praying. Because don't think there's something wrong because there's nothing happening. God may be wanting to teach you patience. But it is wise to do it. Revelation check every now and then. Notice that's, that last bullet. Ask your neighbor, how long are you slack to go to possess the land which God has given you? How long will you neglect what God has to say? Now, I had a mini vision, I guess you could call this. I don't know what you call it. I, I just saw this. Hold on, the men stand up. I, I just saw this, and I wonder why. When I see things like I like to walk it down. The Bible says we are our brother's keeper. Everybody need two or three good prayer warriors. Somebody that you can depend upon. Somebody you can say, hey, man, I need you to agree with me in prayer. Now, we are our brother's keeper. Look at, I want you to look at three brothers and say, I got your back. Come on. You need somebody that's going to pray with you. Men, you need, you're not that strong that you don't need someone. We want to make you think that I can do it myself. No, you can't. Tell your brother, I got your back. Now, we're getting ready to go into another year, 2014. Men, strengthening one another. Women, strengthening one another. The youth, strengthening one another. And even the children. Strengthening one another to go on the enemy's line ground and take back our inheritance. Amen. There's something out there that God has for you that if you don't get some strength, some backbone, and have some fight in you, you'll die without your inheritance. I like to believe, although I'm not here right now in our prayer session, you got my back. I like to believe I might not be able to, I'm coming back, but I have some challenges. I, you know, I've already won the battle. If I've already won the battle, 
I just got to get that strength back into that leg so I can keep over Nathan and the rest of you. But tell your neighbor, I've already won the battle. But see, the good thing about it, I know you got my back. I don't have to be at you. I know you're going to show up. I know you know the importance of prayer. Well, Bishop is not there. I can say, no, 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 no. He's depending upon me. Because we got to do great exploits for God. But I want you brothers, did you tell a brother, I got your back? Did you tell another brother, I got your back? How find that brother say, I got your back, brother. I got your back. Now, have a seat. Have a seat. I want you girls to stand up. Because you have the same charge. The strong bear the infirmities of the weak. Are you there? Can God depend upon you? Can Lady George depend upon you? Can your friends depend upon you? Can the ladies depend upon you? Tell them, I got your back. I got your back. Tell that lady, say, I got your back. I got your back. That's the key right there. We are our brother's keeper. Have a seat. I want all the youth to stand up. All right, the youth, stand up. Now tell, tell your sister, tell your brother, I got your back. I got your back. I got your back. You can depend upon me. Can Pastor Jason, Pastor Mill depend upon you? That's the key. Learning to be dependable. Learn to be responsible. Learning to take the responsibility, to take ownership of this vision. You taking ownership of it. You're not neglecting your responsibility. You're not ne neglecting your friend. You're not neglecting the role that you have to play because you got to prove yourself. All right, you can have a seat. Did you tell somebody, I got your back? Yes, what about the children? Are they over the next door to hear this one? They're here. Children, stand up. Come on, children. Where's JG? There he is. Children, stand up. Tell your friends, I got your back. I got your back. Jay, did you tell Izzy you got her back? Did she tell you what she tell you? <laughs> All right. The main thing is that we cannot be ne neglect negligent. Did I get it right? Okay. And doing what we've been assigned to do. I know that if I stay with God, I stay with his word, Everything he said will come to pass. I don't know when, but Kayla said, I'm 85 years old. I was 40 when I heard it, but I stayed with God. And it's all that the other crowd died out, but God kept me alive because I stayed with his. I'm going to get my inheritance. I'm going to get my inheritance. You can get relaxed in your Christian journey. I'm going to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, and I'm going to get my inheritance. Say it loud. I'm going to get my inheritance. I will get my inheritance. I believe you will get your inheritance. Now take a serious look at your life before we dismiss this service. And if there's something that you want to bring to this altar, bring it down here now. If there's something you say, God, I need your help to crucify, this thing is upholding or withholding or stopping my in here. You can't be negligent. You can't be passive. You have to confront your enemies. You have to confront. God has an inheritance for you. God has a plan for you. God has made promises to you, but if there's issues that you know that you got to deal with, no one else needs to know it. It's between you and God. It's between you and God. Thank you. 
Help us, Jesus. Oh, run on our bones. Yes. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Close your eyes. God, you hear the heart of the people, the cry of the people. Show them. Help them to overcome these adversities and these adversaries that the enemy was saying to stop the will of God from coming to pass. They come to this place where they're willing to confront those enemies of darkness. They're willing to confront the adversaries that Satan has used to stop the inheritance. Now, Lord, Jason, come here, son. You pray fire from heaven. Pray for these people. Pray for them. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We come before you this morning thanking you, Lord God, for the awakening in our subconscious and our spirit, man, this morning about where we need to be. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that we come before you. We humble ourselves this morning. Try our hearts, oh God. Try our ways. If there be anything, Lord God, that's in us, that's hindering us from what you would have us to be, Lord God, we ask you to deal with it this morning. Father, we thank you that the word of God has come so sharply this morning as an as a ax, Lord God, to, to totally cut away every root that's been uh, hindering us, Lord God, and producing the fruit that you called us to. Father, we thank you for bringing us into our expected place, for bringing us to the place of Canaan. But now we're ready to possess that which you have for us in Jesus' name. So, Father, we come this morning to this altar and we humble ourselves before you, Lord God, that if anything be in our lives that's contrary to your will and that's hindering us, Lord God, that has dulled the axe. We pray, Lord God, that you begin to sharpen it this morning, Lord God. We thank you for the word that has come, the very seed that's been sown into our hearts, oh God. The days are barely making it. They are over. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, you have given us this city, Lord God, and we are here to possess it. Father, you have an inheritance for us, Lord God, and we are here to possess it. This day, Lord God, something has happened and taken place in our lives, oh God, and today we acknowledge that we are here to possess the land, which you have for us. So right now, Lord Jesus, we're not waiting for tomorrow. We're not waiting to feel it right now, oh God. We take it by force. Our feet have tread upon it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we have walked around it, Lord God, for years. But now it's time to possess it. We have the prayer of Caleb, Lord God, that we've been here for years. And as we're beginning to wholly follow the Lord, we want to possess it, Lord Jesus. You've given it to us and we receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Take that person's hand beside you. And pray for that person like you want to be prayed for. Just for a minute, about 30 seconds, whilst they're singing, just pray like you, like you, just take it and pray the prayer of faith and say, God, release the strength in this house. Give them the strength. Give them the power. Give them the ability to say no to the adversary, to close those doors. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against the devil. The blood of Jesus is against us. I bind the spirits of confusion. I bind the spirits of darkness. I bind the spirits of the adversary. For the life of this people. For the life of this congregation. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I will give the nation. Jesus, Jesus. As an inheritance for you. Come out of here.
I present my body to you as a living sacrifice. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you my mind. Now give me strength to overcome the adversaries that comes against me. Let's stop your will. Jesus, I present my life to you. I live to please you. All I want to do, Jesus, is satisfy you. Now give me my mountain. Give me strength to take the enemy down, to take back what the enemy has stolen. In Jesus' name. Now, just tell three people, say, I got my strength back. I got my strength back. Tell them, say, I got my strength back. I got my strength back. Yes. 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 I got my tell somebody, I got my strength back. I got my strength back. with Jesus. I'm going to ask you to walk down here and stand beside this brother here. He said he wanted to give his life over to the Lord. And there might be an other chapter there. Likewise. Say, I want to give my life over to the Lord. Anybody else out there say, I want to get things right with God. And that's what you came down here for. Anybody else? Anyone else? All right, son. If you just go with that cup, go with that man there with that hand, and he'll minister to you. Yes. Yes. Hey guys, we must be strong. I have to be strong. Say, I have to be strong. I can't settle for just being a weak Christian, an average Christian. No, I gotta be strong. How do I get strong? The word, prayer, fasting as the Lord leads you. Consistency and doing what is right. That's what makes us strong when we're consistent and obeying his command. Because your flesh is going to tell you no. But no longer are we flesh, but we are spirit. Say, I am strong. I am strong. We, are strong. we are strong. God, make me a stronger man, a stronger woman. I represent God in this life. Amen. So much for that. The Lord God be with each of you. And we bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I think we're going to dismiss the graduates. Am I correct? Where's Brenda? Are they, while they're singing, are they going to dismiss? Where's my help? Somebody tell me something. Uh, yeah. I'll wait till the graduates stand up while Tommy is singing.